Hello guys, today we are going to be talking about hemoglobin. Have you ever thought about how your body works? The conditions in which it works in? And staying healthy? Well good, because I haven't either. It's okay, Ahmed. You don't need to be fit to have your hemoglobin work properly. Come on, Ahmed, just say your goddamn lines! <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna need a minute. A minute. Can you tell my hemoglobin, Greg? Okay. Sure. Hemoglobin is a crucial part of the red blood cell. It reacts with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin which then carries oxygen to the various parts of the body. Furthermore, the main organs involved in this process are the liver and the bone marrow. Bone marrow is pretty epic. Also- oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't ask you to explain. Come on, man. Come on. Continue, Greg. Continue. <coughs> Thanks. Another thing to mention is that hemoglobin contains components called heme. Heme? Mm -hmm. Yes, heme. They are the components of hemoglobin that bond to oxygen. They are quite important. Awesome. Thanks for the information, Greg. Now you can talk, Jared. Yes. There are four main heme groups, heme A, heme B, heme C, and heme O. The most common type is heme B, while heme A and C are very important. Other heme groups are labeled L, M, D, and S, which all are derivatives from the initial four heme groups mentioned earlier. Furthermore, each heme group contains a central iron molecule to which the oxygen bonds. Hence, each hemoglobin molecule is capable of carrying four oxygen molecules. Wow, that's amazing, Jared. I really should have picked you over, Greg. Alright then. Huh, thanks. How about you explain something, Ahmed? Explain the process of oxygenation. Alright, I need some space, though. The formation of oxyhemoglobin, or the oxidation of hemoglobin, is carried out through a reaction shown on the screen. A reversible four-step reaction mechanism in which each step bonds an oxygen to the heme in the hemoglobin. Awesome! Greg, are there any factors that affect the equilibrium process in your body? In my body? No. I'm physically superior. In others? Yes, absolutely. Altitude is one of these factors that I'm quite familiar with. As altitude increases, the pressure of the atmosphere itself decreases, decreasing the side of the equation with more moles. According to my dabbing lessons, the right side decreases to maintain equilibrium, resulting in less oxyhemoglobin. Now, for pilots like me, this causes a huge problem called hypoxia. According to Cleveland Clinic, hypoxia is a lack of oxygen in the tissues. Some symptoms include nausea and lack of consciousness and may, in extreme circumstances, such as rapid decompression in an airplane, cause severe liver damage or death. Now, there are ways to combat this. For high altitude planes, they are required to carry oxygen tanks, which increase the amount of oxygen on the left side of the equation, which causes a shift to the right and an increase in the oxyhemoglobin to reach equilibrium. Mountain climbers employ a similar method to help them with this. According to Digipack, they camp at high altitudes at night in order for their bodies to become used to the lower pressure. This increase in pressure would allow for an increase in the side of the equation with more moles, and increase the amount of oxyhemoglobin. The more oxyhemoglobin will allow them to ascend the mountain higher and higher. This process, of course, would be repeated several times until they finally reach the peak. Sounds good, my man. So obviously, this affects your breathing rates as well, right? Ahmed, can you cover that for me? Sure, Mr. Chismore. A similar, albeit less drastic replication of this scenario can be done simply by alternating breathing. By holding your breath, a lack of oxygen is created. The oxygenated hemoglobin balances out with the lack of oxygen and equilibrium shifts to the left. As a result, you can feel some of the hypoxemia, which Gershengorn describes as a lack of oxygen in the blood. The effects of holding your breath for a bit may include lightheadedness or of holding your breath for too long, unconsciousness. On the opposite side, hyperventilation causes an increase in oxygen on the left side of the equation, causing a shift in equilibrium to the right. Since more oxygenated hemoglobin is created, a larger supply of it will last a longer time. Freedivers use hyperventilation in this way, as this increase in oxygenated hemoglobin allows them to hold their breath for a very extended period of time. The current record for underwater breath holding is over 22 minutes. Can you believe that? However, hyperventilation or receiving too much oxygen through other means can lead to hyperoxemia or even oxygen toxicity. Mr. Darmish Kumar tells me that symptoms can include some similar to hypoxemia, such as the feeling of nausea, but also include lung damage and failure, neural cell death, and seizures. That's amazing, Ahmed. You're such a nerd. Okay, Jared, how about you answer this next question? What are some of the disorders that are associated with hemoglobin in your body? 
Well, Ahmed, the disorder I'm going to talk about is sickle cell anemia. As the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute taught me, sickle cell anemia, or SCA for short, is a serious disease that negatively affects the hemoglobin equilibrium in your body. SCA causes red blood cells to appear as a crescent shape, rather than round like they should be. Hemoglobin that is made for a sickle cell is able to be oxygenated, but it doesn't make the same sort of properly oxygenated hemoglobin that the body is looking for, and this type of cell is unable to properly oxygenate the tissues of the body. Yet again, Le Chatelier's principle comes into play. SCA causes both necessary hemoglobin and oxygen to be wasted and used up. As such, the oxygenated hemoglobin must balance to maintain equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle shows that the equilibrium must shift towards the reactants. As such, the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin must decrease to maintain equilibrium. This leads to severe hypoxemia, causing symptoms such as pain, organ failure, and it eventually leads to an early death. Oh, dang, man. You literally get Chatelier to death by oxygen not being transported around your body properly. That must suck. You thought that was bad. Now combine that with high altitudes and other factors that decrease your oxygen intake, and you are done for. Wow. I never realized how sensitive our bodies are. It's a good idea to have a good understanding of how the chemistry works behind everything to make sure that you can stay healthy. In conclusion, it is very clear that the process of hemoglobin equilibrium is very intense and sensitive. So make sure to treat your body with care, love, respect, and most of all, stay healthy. Before you go, let's recap the five things we talked about in this video. First, we talked about hemoglobin and the four types of heme that are associated with hemoglobin. Those four types are heme A, B, C, and O. Secondly, we talked about the formation of oxyhemoglobin through a four-step reaction mechanism. Number three, we talked about how altitude affects the hemoglobin process in your body. Fourthly, we talked about how different breathing patterns affects equilibrium in your body. Last thing we talked about is sickle cell anemia, a disease that affects the equilibrium process in your body. Thanks for that, Ahmed. With that, we conclude our video. Good luck on that test!